Biden pushes economic policy as Trump indictment gets attention. President Joe Biden ventured to suburban Minneapolis on Monday to talk about factory jobs and contrast his agenda with the last guy who had this job. The last guy, as Biden calls Donald Trump, was simultaneously touching down in New York to become the first former president to be arrested, the Biden White House, which has shied away from involvement in the legal spectacle surrounding Trump, hoped to turn the split-screen moment into a chance to showcase the president's accomplishments and relatively drama-free administration. It represented a rehash of the choice that voters made in 2020, and might have to make again in 2024, as both men intend to seek the White House, Biden offered himself as a veteran policymaker while Trump, ever the showman, aimed to use Tuesday's arraignment on criminal charges to generate campaign donations and fire up Republican voters. Biden sought to highlight job growth and investments nationwide while pushing clean energy and manufacturing in the U.S. during his visit to engine maker Cummins Incorporated. The company announced in conjunction with his visit that it's investing more than $1 billion in its U.S. engine manufacturing network in Indiana, North Carolina, and New York to update facilities so they can produce low to zero carbon engines. Dogged by high inflation, Biden said his policies and spending will position the U.S. for greater prosperity in the future that boosts the middle class. The plan is to invest in America, in a literal sense, Biden said not overseas. In America. Invest in ourselves, and it's working. Trump left his Florida home for New York City, posting on Truth Social that the indictment, tied to payments made during his 2016 campaign, was part of a witch hunt against him. He later sent out a message that tried to fundraise off his predicament. Biden's team saw Monday's trip to the Cummins facility as a way to sharpen the contrast with Trump. If Trump gobbles up attention, administration officials say, Biden wants his message to be squarely focused on the American middle class. Stick to your message that you want to be talking about with discipline, said Andrew Bates, Deputy White House Press Secretary. Whatever else is happening, you just have to keep talking about what it is that you want to talk about. The president regularly highlights the CHIPS Act, the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill, the $1 trillion infrastructure legislation and a roughly $375 billion climate bill, major bills that his administration steered into law before Democrats lost control of the House in last year's elections to Republicans. The White House wants to contrast Biden's record and a proposed budget that includes $2.6 trillion in new spending with Republicans' plans for spending and economic growth. Republicans have rejected Biden's budget but have yet to bring forward a counteroffer to the Democrats' blueprint, which is built around tax increases on the wealthy and a vision statement of sorts for Biden's yet-to-be-declared 2024 campaign. Other members of Biden's administration are traveling to more than 20 states this week to buttress his message. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, for example, went to Connecticut on Monday for a fireside chat at Yale University on the economic agenda. While the president blasted Trump's 2017 tax cuts for raising the deficit, Yellen panned them for failing to boost growth. The Treasury Secretary said Trump's signature achievement has not been very successful, even at promoting investment spending and growth. What the cuts did, instead, is tilt the tax code in favor of those with extreme degrees of wealth, according to Yellen. If you take something like the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, she said, maybe that had some marginal impact on boosting private investment, not obvious that it did. But it certainly raised the incomes of the wealthy individuals who received those huge tax cuts, and so it made the tax burden a lot less fair. First Lady Jill Biden was in Colorado to promote Biden's efforts to promote job training at community colleges and had other stops this week planned in Maine and Vermont. Her plans to visit Michigan later Monday were postponed because of an aircraft issue. As the president returned to Washington, a large TV on Air Force One ran Trump headlines as Biden stood facing the screen in a conference room with his staff. Put all together, the plan is to invest in America in a literal sense. 
not overseas, in America. Invest in ourselves, and it's working. Here's what it looks like across the country. A record 12,400,000 brand new jobs, including 800,000 manufacturing jobs, just since we came to office. That's more jobs in two years. That's more jobs in two years than any president's created in four years. That's because of this group sitting right in front of you you just heard from. It means we're recovering every single lost job in the pandemic created three million more. Instead of exporting jobs to cheap for, get cheaper labor costs, we did, that's what we did for decades. We used to lead the world, by the way, in investment. But what we started to do, we started importing, exporting jobs and importing product, generating deficits. Now we're creating American jobs and exporting American products and growing our economy. Since I took office, we've attracted commitments from more than $435 billion in private investment in less than two years. And American manufacturing, American energy, look, and we've announced over 23,000 infrastructure, construction jobs, projects, in over 4,500 cities and towns all across America. Groundbreakings for new roads and bridges and airports, projects to deliver clean water, high-speed internet to homes and schools. And we're going to clean your Great Lakes while we're at it, by the way. Plus, Plus, my economic plan is building more clean energy future made in America. Not in America, made in America. For example, we're building a network of 500,000 electric vehicle stations by the IBW all across America. Right here in Minnesota, when you're driving across I-94 or taking I-35 through the Twin Cities, charging stations will be easy to find as easy as it is to find a gas station today. Folks, we're providing incentives for companies like Cummins to manufacture clean energy technology right here in Minnesota. For over a century, Cummins has built diesel engines and heavy-duty trucks and power, gener power generators. For over half, half of all medium and heavy-duty trucks on the road today are come, have Cummins engines. Well, today you made generating generators for the Department of Defense for decades as I walked through and saw them. World War II, 50% of all the diesel and gas generators used by the Allies in the war came from Cummins. When Cummins first manufactured hydrogen electrolyzers, they had to make them overseas. These are the machines that make clean hydrogen, a renewable energy used to power our economy from clean cars to trucks to steel to cement manufacturing. But now, thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, with the tax credits for renewable energy, Cummins is going to manufacture these electrolyzers here in America for the first time. And Cummins, Cummins is turning this part of the factory where we're standing now into a new production line for clean energy technology. Here at this plant, 600 workers now making diesel engines will be retrained an additional 100 jobs, so a total of 700 jobs, will be making clean energy technology. You know, we're seeing it as a boom for American innovation, American industry, and it's good for the planet as well. Already, Cummins has signed contracts for clean hydrogen for producers and utilities in New York, Florida, and Washington State. And it's just beginning, just beginning. Think about what it means for our supply chain and our community. Before the pandemic, the supply chain wasn't something most Americans spent much time thinking about. But today, after delays for parts and products, everyone knows why supply chains are so important. Instead of relying on equipment made overseas in places like China, the supply chains will be again made in America. They'll begin in America. Begin in America. Cummins will build the technology that produces clean hydrogen. Companies and utilities across the country will use those products to make clean hydrogen. And trucks made in America with zero emission engines will be powered by clean hydrogen. And by the way, that includes Cummins, which just today announced that it will invest over $1 billion